Good evening, good evening. We welcome you to Kingdom Combustion. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and we're just going to give each and every person a chance to come on in. We're going to come in giving God honor, giving Him glory, giving Him praise, knowing that this is a day that He has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Just come in with your hallelujah, type it in the comments. Hallelujah, God, we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. You are king. You are Lord. You are master. Besides you, there is no other. Hallelujah. 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 We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to our king. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome from New York City. We're just thanking God for being so good to us, to giving us honor and glory and praise. It's an exciting time to be in New York City. Standard Bear Ministries is turning 10. We will be celebrating, amen. We will be excited about the goodness of what God has done 10 years later, amen. So tonight, we are in a season of wow, 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 wow. A, a, a word of astonishment and if you uh, had a wow in your life in the past week, just put raise your hands up in the comments because God has been doing some miraculous things in our lives. Good evening, Elder Susan. Good evening, Pastor Philip, Pastor Anjali. Good evening, uh, Disciple Gina. Good evening, Deaconess Daisy. Good evening to all. Amen? So we're excited uh, about what God is doing in this wow season. And I am just thanking God. Uh, last week, we started a series related to the wow. And that first W in wow was the widow. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the O. And that wow and that O is the orphan. Amen? So let's open up in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you, God, that we are not orphans, that you did not see us as orphans, and that you were able to send your son to reconnect us back to you, God. So, Father, we just thank you that we know that you are our hedge of protection. We know that we're not abandoned. We know without you, we can do nothing. So, Father, we just want to give you honor and glory tonight. And for those that feel abandoned, to know that as they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they are no longer orphans in this world. So, Father, we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name, and we say amen. Say amen. Welcome, welcome. It's kingdom combustion time. It's time to get ignited. And I wanted to talk to you about the orphan. Uh, it was, uh, you know, this wow series that we're doing. Uh, I'm just thanking the Holy Spirit for his instruction related to this. And the orphan, by definition, is a child deprived by death of one or usually both parents. It's also, uh, another definition is a young animal that has lost its mother. And it's also, uh, the third definition is one deprived of some protection or advantage. Amen? So the scripture tonight, there's going to be uh, two portions of scripture, but the scripture that we're going to just, you know, I want you to process with tonight is uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17, and that's NLT. And it says, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Amen. So even in this scripture, it takes us back to last week's wow, which was the widow. And we talked about the widow. And now this week, we're going to discuss the O, which is the orphan. So do, are you aware that there are approximately 153 million orphaned or vulnerable children around the world? Are we aware of that? Because sometimes we can get so focused on the things that are right in front of us that we don't see. We just see uh, our lives, you know, our community, our city. But if we look at things on a global perspective, we'll see that there are vulnerable children all over the world. And it's a real hard number to visualize. So let's say it's the entire population of Russia or Mexico. It's the whole thing. Or it's half of the population of the United States. Can you imagine that there are vulnerable children, children that have been abandoned, not cared about, and it's half of the whole population of the United States? So tonight I just want you to, in this wow season, to start just having a, a heart of compassion for those who 
feel vulnerable, for those who feel unprotected. And tonight we're going to talk about an orphan. Because sometimes one of the things that we realize, those that might have been adopted or those might have been in foster care or they might have been abandoned or abused or so or you know, or just different things that may have befall you in your childhood. I want you to know that with uh, Jesus Christ, he can make all things right. He can, he can heal you. He can encourage you. He can touch your heart. You are never alone. You are not rejected. So I want to encourage you tonight. You are not an orphan. Amen? So let's go to the book of Esther, chapter 2. Because sometimes, you know, when we talk about Esther, we love the part, if she perished, that's like my favorite scripture, I thought, one of my favorite, because I have a few, but it's like, if I perish, let me perish, I'm going to see the king. So we love Queen Esther, we love the story of Esther, but let's go to uh, Esther chapter 2, uh, verse 5, and it says, there was a certain Jew in the citadel of Susa whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Verse 6 says, who had been deported from Jerusalem with the captives who had been exiled with Jeconah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had exiled. So they were sent out. So now verse 7 says, he was the guardian of Hadassah, I mean, some may or may not know, but Esther's name was Hadassah. That was her name. So, and he said, that is Esther. And it says, his uncle's daughter, for she had no father or mother. And I think sometimes we overlook that part of the Esther story. We talk about the queen, and we talk about her, about her being and favored and chosen, and we agree with all of that. But the other thing is, is that sometimes we really talk about that Esther was being raised by a relative. She was she had no mother or no or father. The scripture says the young woman was beautiful of form and face. And when her father and mother died, Mordecai took her in as his own daughter. And I'm I'm talking to someone tonight that feels that they're abandoned and alone. And even some of us may have our parents and we feel as though they may not want us or reject us. But I'm saying to you tonight, just as Mordecai took in uh, Esther as his own daughter, Jesus Christ, your heavenly father, the Holy Spirit, the three in one, they want you to come back into relationship with the father by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You are not alone. You are not abandoned. Because even if your mother and father forsake you, he will lift you up. So I'm talking to someone tonight who feels disconnected, who's feeling alone, who's feeling that, you know, I, I don't have any parents. And I'm saying you have a father in heaven who sits high and looks low and who cares about you. So I want to encourage you because sometimes in this holiday season, in the season of giving and gifts and so forth, the others that feel so uh, uh, disconnected or lost or left alone. And I'm encouraging tonight, you are not an orphan. Wow, can you believe that? You are not an orphan. Don't be surprised. God is with you. And when God is with you, who can be against you? So we're talking about Esther and I was, you know, I was thinking about the different things that she had to go through. Because think about it. Uh, Esther was handed over, you know, she went into a harem. And sometimes, you, you know, when you think back to that, you think, oh, she, you know, she was chosen by the king. But now when we reflect about that, I mean, she was just like a object. Just, it was just related to her beauty. And sometimes we get so focused on the outside that we don't work on our inside. And I'm encouraging each and every one of us that sometimes that superficial face that we put on, so we put on our makeup, we, we get our hair done, we get our nails done, we get the shoes on, we get, you know, you get ready, we're getting ready to celebrate a stand bear and everybody's getting themselves ready. But I'm saying you need to get your heart ready. You need to know and be clear that, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm encouraging you tonight. Mm. You are not an orphan. Even if your mother and father is not alive, you are able to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and Master and come into the family of God. 
So tonight I encourage you, accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior and your Master. So I want to go to Esther where she finds favor because we talk about her and, you know, I'm saying that she's an orphan, but thank God she had, you know, Mordecai who took her in as her own daughter. And, uh, you know, I am, you know, my mom passed away uh, last year and, uh, I had a bunch of spiritual moms because I didn't really have a good relationship with my mom. And I, I thank God that many, you know, do have that relationship. And I strive to have that with my own children. But I'm saying that to say that, you know, find a mentor. Find someone that's going to care for you. Men need to be mentored by men. Women need to be mentored by women. It wasn't that Esther knew what to do, but she had a Mordecai in her life. She had a man in her life, a godly man in her life, who cared about her, to, to, who would guide and direct her. Not abuse her, but he guided and directed her. So I just wanted to, to share that point because sometimes we think we can learn everything on our own, but we can't uh, check our own selves. I, I love to say that, you know, we can't do, be our own checks and balances. There is someone that you would need to be checking in with. And as apostolic leader, I, I have other apostles that we connect with and we discuss and I'm saying, is this right or is this is this not right? What is your thoughts about that? You, No man is an island. No woman is an island. You cannot stand alone. So I'm encouraging you. Uh, you can't, uh, as we step out and doing a ministry, we step out and, and doing a business, we step out. You need a mentor. You need someone to guide you. You need someone to direct you. Not to be in charge of you, not to lord over you, but you need to sometimes bounce your ideas and your thought processes off on others. Amen? And I, I, you know, I thank God for Esther the, being that orphan that she submitted to listen to what Mordecai would say, his instruction. Amen. So let's go to verse eight in the same Esther chapter two. And it says, Esther finds favor. She says, so it came about when the king's command and his decree were proclaimed. And when many young women were gathered together in the citadel of Susa into the custody of Haggai, that Esther was taken to the king's palace and placed in custody of Haggai, who was in charge of the women. Verse 9 says, Now the young woman pleased Haggai and found favor with him. And I'm speaking that tonight, that we're in a season of wow. We're in a season of, of, of breakthrough. We're in a, a season of, of things coming to pass. We're, we're in a season of things, seeds that you have sown, that now that you're now time to reap. It's time to smell the flowers. It's time to smell the roses in Jesus' Now It's a season of favor. So I speak it even now in your life in the name of Jesus. Even if you think people rejected you. Even if you think they forgot about you. Even if they didn't pay you back your money. I'm saying now in Jesus, double, double, double for your trouble, trouble, trouble. This is your time of favor. This is your time of breakthrough. This is your time time of elevation. This is your time to not have any frustration. This is your moment. This is your season. We, this is a moment of favor. Receive it in Jesus name. But you got to be in relationship with him because it's in Jesus name we're talking about. Hallelujah. So verse nine says, now the young woman pleased Haggai and found favor with him. So he quickly provided her with beauty, preparations and her portion of food and he gave her seven choice maids from the king's palace can you imagine she was being prepared and she got seven maids what are we talking about well what won't god do for you won't we have so many testimonies in the past week those who got jobs those that had paperwork in courts that got free uh those that got uh, um grants I mean, this testimony after testimony of wow, 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 wow. And I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter that the, your W was a widow like last week. And it doesn't matter if you're orphaned, like you feel like you're all alone. I'm saying when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have more than enough. You have exceedingly and abundantly more than you can think, ask, or imagine. So I'm encouraging you. You are not an orphan. You are not alone. You are not forsaken. But you got to go get into relationship with Jesus Christ. So we bless his holy name tonight. I'm so thankful to the Lord that we're not an orphan. I'm thankful that he sent his son Jesus Christ to reconnect us with him. 
I'm thankful that he knew who we were when he put us in our mother's womb. So we thank the Lord tonight in Jesus name. So I want to finish this portion and then I'll give, you know, I will, you know, you know, Apostle Sonia always got a story. So the last portion says, uh, I'll just read it from nine again. It says, now the woman pleased Haggai and found favor with him. So he quickly provided her with beauty preparations and her portion of food. And he gave her seven choice maids from the king's um, palace. Then he transferred her and her maids to the best place in the harem. And I'm saying to you, you're in your best place. You're in your best season. You're in your best moment. I, uh, Esther didn't have a normal queen's life. She started out with no parents. And it doesn't matter where you're starting. It's talk, we're talking about a destination. So this is your time to get back to the drawing board. This is your time to get some mentorship in Jesus' name. Because without Mordecai, uh, Esther would not have even survived because she would have needed someone to care for her. But even he released her when he needed to because he knew there was a bigger purpose for your life. So one of the things we have to accept in mentorship, it's not just we just uh, a person mentors you. But they also assist you in be developing in who you're called to be. But there is some leadership that will be needed. And I encourage all of them that a man needs a male mentor and a woman needs a woman mentor. Don't do it any different because the things that uh, women are going through, a man cannot always discuss. And the things that a man is going through, he can't discuss with a woman. So I always encourage each and every person, if you're going to be mentored, uh, use the right, you know, stay with it, stay in your lane. Have a male mentor if you're a man and a female mentor if you're a woman. So we're talking about an orphan and we're talking about being, uh, you know, some people feel abandoned and disconnected. And uh, I was going through a, a, a moment because we're going into our 10th year of Standard Bear Ministries. And I w I've had a lot of time to reflect over the 10 years. And um, I um, did not have the best uh, relationship with my parents. So many times I felt like an orphan because I'm like, I'm trying to do the best I can. But our relationship was just not what it was. But I was thankful that God always inserted people in my life who, uh, you know, senior women and men that cared for me. And then, of course, now we're talking about, wow, and I'm a widow. Uh, you know, my husband passed away almost uh, three and a half, almost, yeah, three and a half years ago. So I'm going through this wow uh, season. But I just got excited because even Esther, this orphan, became queen. And our outreach vehicle in... Uh, in Florida, you know, she's an apostolic, big red uh, explorer. Her name is Esther. And, uh, you know, we named, I, I named the cars in the ministry. So, uh, you know, I was driving Esther down the highway and I heard the Lord say, it's your chapter 42. And I, you know, I want to encourage you because my chapter 42, and, and this is your homework. Uh, is in the, the book of Job. And I'm not telling you the story. I'm going to paraphrase it for you because I, I feel each and every person that's uh, going to be listening to this video, each and every person that's going to see it on YouTube or on our website, each and every one of you, this is your moment. This is your season. As you pressed into the Lord, as you have sacrificed, if you have given, as you have shared, and if you have cared, and as you have loved, this is your moment. Uh, as I said, you know, we have, you know, I was, you know, we're talking about orphans and we're supporting some ministries overseas in Dubai. And they sent me the pictures of some of the orphans in Zambia that we, you know, assist. They sent me uh, pictures of, uh, 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 you know, blind uh, our brethren that we, you know, we assist, you know, and I, uh, we sent some money the other day and uh, to hear that that money created another feeding program in India. Uh, I think it was in Sri Lanka. It was, it just overwhelmed me. It was just an overwhelming thing to see that even if you are not an orphan, that even if we sow and give to other things that children in the, you know, that live on streets and live in ghettos and those who can't take care of themselves do through lack of sight, that we uh, are able to assist and help them. 
And, you know, I started off this teaching as wow. And I'm saying to you, wow, think about an orphan in this season. Wow, think about a widow in this season. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to, to encourage someone. So uh, in this season, seek out someone and, get, and share the love of Christ with them. Seek out someone and just say a kind word. Seek out someone and wow them. Remember, we started this wow series, and this wow is not about us. This wow is to wow others, to care for others, to love others. It's 153 million orphans around the world. Can you do something? Can we do something? So I'm encouraging you tonight. Um, God is about to do something miraculous in your life when you start caring for others. So, uh, you know, as I'm closing, because, you know, we get ready to party tomorrow at Standard Bearer, so I got to get my, 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 my stroll together <laughs> according to, you know, what they're doing. So, but I want to encourage you in this season, there is a Job chapter 42. And I'll close with this. When my uh, late husband passed away, Prior to him passing away, I read the book of Job. And when I was reading the book of Job and when he got diagnosed with cancer, I was saying, oh, this is about him. You know how you read the scripture and you could say, say it's for someone else, but it's not for you. But when I read it, the Lord said, you know what? It was for you. It's for you. You're going to lose a lot of things. And I, you know, I've lost a lot of things. Uh, but I've gained a lot of people. Because when others felt abandoned, I, I opted to, to be and stand in the gap to be what people needed to be in, their, in your life. But this is our moment now because the Lord said to me, what you have done, I'm getting ready to do for you. So know that there's a Job chapter 42 where everything is going to be restored. So I'm encouraging each and every one of you tonight. You're no longer an orphan. In, when we're in the kingdom of God, we no longer are alone. But you got to make yourself available to want to be friendly. You got to want to be loving. You got to be want to be kind. We got to exercise being a Christian. We got to exercise the love of Christ. We So this, you know, in this season of wow, you, you know, it's exciting to get your wow. But be the wow. So I just, you know, I love you all. You know, this was a sobering thought because to think about Esther being the orphan, to be an Esther being the queen and then saving the people. Who are you? Who can you save? Who can you love? Who can you care about? Who can you sow into? So you can grow into who you're called to be. So, you know, I love you all. Uh, we just, the wow is, is bigger than us. The wow is bigger than what we drive and what we wear and, you know, who we know and who we rub shoulders is. Because the biggest wow is to have Jesus Christ in your life, to accept him as your personal savior. And as we are in this season where people are concerned about gifts and what, you know, children are telling you what they want and what they, what I'm saying, what I want for you is to, to find relationship with Christ so you can be free. And when you're free in Christ, you are truly free indeed. You're no longer distressed. You're never depressed. You're no, never feeling oppressed, but you gotta accept him so you can release all the stress. So it's a wow season. Expect God to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can think or imagine. And this, this message is not limited to just Esther being a queen. There's a king in you for the men. There's a king in you. Tap into Christ so you can be all that you are called to be. It's no longer um, church as usual. It's no longer ministry as usual. If you don't get into relationship... There's nothing. You, you have to get connected to the vine. You have to connect to, get connected to Jesus Christ. You, this is the season you have to um, build your relationship with him vertically. 
and not that someone has to tell you, but you have to want to. Just like you go to work, just like you go to school, just like you want to excel in other things, you got to want to. You got to want to read your word. You got to want to pray. And if you have difficulty in that, that's where a mentor comes in. You need accountability. You can't train yourself. So as Mordecai assisted Esther and even uh, Haggai, who helped her even when she was in a harem, if you notice, Esther was being mentored all the way through. And I say, and I said that, you know, we don't want men as mentors and women as mentors, but look at the biblical example. Sometimes God does put spiritual fathers in your life to help you along the way, to encourage you to be all you are to be. So I just, you know, thank you all. I love you all. I thank you for all that, you know, support Standard Bear Ministries and Kingdom Advancement Alliance. I thank you for um, supporting Kingdom Combustion. And, you know, you haven't seen anything yet. But tonight, you need to read Job chapter 42 because it's restoration time. It's time to be wowed. So God bless you all. I love you all. Uh, you know, I'm live from where my Rockville, Rockville Center in Long Island. And I'm just thanking God that, you know, for traveling mercies and being able to get around and do what I need to do safely and healthy. And um, I thank you for your love and support and as we go into this season, a continuous wow. He's wowing us all the way out through the uh, into the new year and beyond. The goal is that you just share your testimonies with us. Go on to standardbearerny.org. There's a section you can put in your praise report. And just let us know that these messages are supporting and helping you and encouraging you to be all you are to be in Christ. So God bless you all. Love you much. This is Kingdom Combustion. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and it's a wow season. God bless you, and good night.